Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I have a Type 96 Japanese Nambu light machine gun here, and uh, just uh, got my hands on this, and I figured I'm often asked, what do you do, like what goes into prepping a gun for Forgotten Weapons filming? So uh, today, out at the range is actually my very first range trip with this gun, so I figured I'd give you a little bit of a look into what I'm gonna do with it. So I should point out, before we got out here, um, I pulled apart and uh, both of my magazines made sure that they uh, they run smoothly there isn't any there isn't a lot of gunk in them there aren't any dents in them both the magazines appear to be good uh, I pulled apart the gun uh, stripped the gun checked to make sure that everything internally looked good uh, make sure that the firing pin isn't chipped or broken make sure that the bolt runs smoothly make sure that the locking lugs look you know don't have any cracks in them uh, make sure the gun is just generally in good working order, uh, and then gave it a just a light coat of lubrication, a little bit of oil on the moving parts. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, on a gun like this, double check just to be 100% sure that the barrel isn't plugged, because sometimes that happens on Dewatt machine guns. Make sure that there isn't a hole drilled in the barrel anywhere. That's a very, very unlikely thing, but if it is, if, if you happen to have a gun that's got a hole drilled in the barrel and you fire it, you will have catastrophic results. So it's always worth double checking that. Anyway, uh, now we're actually set up out here on the range and we can get to real business. Okay. I've got some ammo from Steinel, 140 grain soft point, 6.5 semi rimmed. It's a pain in the butt cartridge to get. So, first is a single round to make sure the gun works, then we'll go to three rounds to make sure that it doesn't run away. Uh, and then we'll do some more shooting. I'm going, the, the rear sight here is windage adjustable, so I'm gonna try to get it actually zeroed. This should be a very pleasant gun to shoot. Right, you do have to cock it. A little bit high. So, that magazine worked at least for one round. My empty case, primer indent is good, not too deep, didn't penetrate, but solid enough to be a, a good, reliable uh, firing. All right, that's three rounds empty there. Now, now we can actually load this up a bit. These are 30 round mags, which are almost harder to find than the gun. I was very lucky that uh, I managed to get a pair of magazines. So I'm only shooting at a target that is 60 yards away, something like that. Uh, the lowest setting on the gun is 200. I am hitting about a foot high, which seems about right for a 200 yard zero at 60 yards. So um, not really anything I can do about that at this short range. The gun's not intended to be fired, you know, or zeroed at something this ridiculously close. All right. Now the real fun. Oop, that felt like a malfunction. Let's see what's up. That's a malfunction right there. So we got a live round. It got squished going in, possibly because this is soft point. Nothing in the chamber, so we'll leave that one aside. It seems to be depositing the empty cases in a pretty nice uh, little linear area. Yeah. This time. 
Oh. Well, okay. So, the actual problem last time was a split case. So when this got jammed in, so what happened last time is I've got a case out there somewhere where it tore the back half of the case off. And then when it tried to load this round, um, you can see that the front, the neck of the, the broken case got jammed onto the bullet. Fortunately, tight enough that when I went to extract it, it pulled that out. But let's see. There it is. So that, ooh, still a little hot. That is a uh, case neck separation. You got some scraping there, but that's not broken. Um, that is either the result of a bad chamber or badly annealed brass. Go ahead and empty the magazine. As long as I aim just a little bit low, I'm actually able to hit that, uh, that red bucket without any trouble. All right. According to my magazine, I am out of ammunition because if you look at this up close, we have a round counter in the back of the magazine. And it's those are numbers that are on the follower. So as the follower goes up, it'll tell me I've got one, two, or three rounds, or zero, remaining. All right, now I'm gonna put a couple rounds on a paper target to check the exact windage. Like I know it's pretty close, but this thing has this really nice click adjustable aperture, so I can get a precise zero on paper, but I have to get some more ammo first. You know what, actually I should do this one round at a time because I'm not really used to the trigger on this thing yet and I don't want to end up with doubles when I'm trying to, you know, fire one round at a time for zeroing. This is much like the Bren gun for unloading, by the way, where you take your whole hand and palm this lever forward as you tip the magazine forward. Very fast to, to get the magazine out of. So the sights are offset to the left, of course, because the magazine's right in the middle. Um, unlike a lot of guns, the French guns in particular, when they offset the sights to the left, you just can't shoot it left-handed. The Nambu, both the 96 and the 99, are actually both very forgiving, very easy to shoot left-handed, just rolling your head slightly over the stock. All right, this is open bolt, so go take a look at the zero and see how those shots did. Yeah, okay, this tells me almost nothing really usable. So I was aiming here to make sure that, you know, to take care of the elevation issue. Um, boy, that one's good. Those two, not so much. I think I will adjust it just slightly off uh, over to the left and see if that improves it a little bit fire a few more rounds next time to get a better idea of where it's actually hitting. All right, it's kind of time consuming to uh, do single shots by just single loading the magazine and recharging it every time. So I'm gonna put six rounds in here. Uh, and I'm going to see if I can just do singles on the trigger. Now, first, Okay, I gave it three clicks of windage adjustment. I probably should have looked it up, uh, but I didn't before we came out. I have no idea what the adjustment <laughs> increments are on this thing. So it seems to be pretty gross adjustment. We'll try three and see what happens. We'll also see if I can 
reliably fire signals. The length of pull on this thing is remarkably short. Like, if you try and pull this good and tight in, uh, your face is sitting on this end cap. So you kind of have to deliberately sit back on it a little bit. All right, so much for being able to fire singles. Those were all doubles and we fired six rounds on target. Let's go take a look and see what happened. It's probably not that good for zeroing, but uh, who knows, maybe. All right, so sorry, I think we uh, missed the first double there, the first two shots, but uh, I tried for singles. I got doubles each time. One of the interesting things about the gun though is between being in 6.5 and being a light machine gun, so relatively heavy, and frankly, being a really well-designed gun, the recoil is really, really light uh, to, as compared to most other light machine guns. So I'm really curious to see if my doubles are actually forming a reasonably good group because the gun does not move around that much when you're shooting. <laughs> oh, I like that. So those are two shot bursts, bursts. Um, I'm gonna call that windage dead on now. Uh, once again, I was aiming here cause this is a 200 yard zero and that's as low as the gun goes. But people discount Japanese firearms often because largely because there was so much, so little cultural uh, shared culture between the United States and Japan during World War II. They just were, the Germans and the Italians had a lot in common with a lot of Americans. Japan was much more of an alien cultural culture to the typical American or American soldier. And so that combined with a little bit of genuine misunderstanding about some of the, the firearms technology they had caused a lot of Americans to go, all that Japanese stuff, it's all crap, it's all worthless. And that's a big mistake because the Arasaka is a very well-designed rifle and the Nambu light machine guns are outstanding. So uh, I'm going to do a full 20 round or 30 round magazine now and I want to see what, what kind of group I can get on this paper in real bursts, three to five round bursts. So we'll tape these up, load up a magazine and try that out. All right, I got full 30 rounds. Let's see what this puppy can do. Same thing happened a second time. It is not a safety hazard at this point, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish out the magazine. Something, something. All right, I think we just had a plain old failure to feed. Yep, once again, soft point has uh, bitten us there. Soft point is what Steinel offers or what I got from them. I'm not sure, I'll have to go check on their website, talk to Andy Steinel and see if he does an FMJ loading. And now I know that I am out from looking at my uh, round indicator on the magazine. There's that. Double check. We got nothing in the chamber. So uh, that ended up being 28 rounds. Let's go see how many of them actually landed on target. Okay. I know some people who can't shoot rifles that well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight. All not only on the target, but on the paper and inside the circle. 
that is a very impressive gun and I look forward to doing some more formal, uh, more organized shooting with it. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the video. I figured, what the heck, this is my first time out to the range with this. We've never really done a video of what goes into getting a gun prepped for uh, Forgotten Weapons. So there you go. Thanks for watching.